Welcome to Sports Talk in the Berg. Welcome to Sports Talk in the Berg, everybody. Good evening. I'm your host, Michael Shuley, and alongside me on our panel, the wondrous cast we have for you today. Another awkward person from upstate New York, John Hanna. A person <laughs> as irrelevant as the state they are from, Delaware's own Tyler Gallo, and former Southside Beaver football coach, Luke Yost. Before we meet them, let's jump right into our first topic here tonight. The Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Los Angeles Chargers last Sunday night to pick up their second victory of the season. Guys, what do you think about their performance last Sunday, and is the defense playing better? Well, to that first one, James Conner impressed me the most out of anyone on that James, team. It's not just James Conner. They, they were really worried when James Samuels went down. Benny Snell stepped up, next man up mentality, 17 rushes for 75 yards. But you know what impressed me most about Conner? His receiving game, 78 yards, seven receptions, one touchdown. He, that's his been, receptions. That's, that's how the Steelers have been playing for the past number of years, especially with like when they had Le'Veon Bell, but they had, James Conner starting no, last year. No catches last week against Baltimore. He only had 55 yards on the care. ground. I really don't care. I'm talking about ground game, Johnny. And hey, guys, I mean, that offense basically clicked in the first half of that game. That's really the name of the game there. And they were able to quell the running game of the Chargers, which is pretty good. You know, Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler are not, are not any names to sneeze at, and they were able to quell that in that game. Sneeze at. No, listen. They had. A, they've given up 125 yards on the ground against. We'll, we'll say, lackluster town uh, in yeah, the past five. Nothing great. Past five games. They held Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler to 32 yards on the ground this weekend. Yeah. I think that's a great sure, sign held, for this. They defense. held them on the gar to, on the ground. They gave up 348 yards in John, total. John, at the end of the day, the Steelers are two and four, hey. not one and five. Who cares? John, a They're win's a win. They're still two and four. It's not that good. A Who win's cares? a win, buddy. A win's a win. This is a tough division. Any win counts. And sure, if you have to give up 300 yards in the, over the air, I don't care as long as you win games. And hey, I will say this. I mean, their defense. Uh, it was a dreadful start to the season. I'll say that. I mean, everybody dreadful knows that. Dreadful start. It's still dreadful. And the hey, low, the lowest was one. John, 175 they won the game. Cincinnati. And yes, let me say this. They allowed 17 points in that fourth quarter. That is something to keep an eye on going forward. But still, it is a, a win's a win. A win's a win. A exactly. win's a win. That's the mentality here. All right. Thank you, guys. John, I'm going to have to disagree with you all day, every day. I will take 17 points in a defensive touchdown scored by my defense. I don't care how many yards they give up. That's a solid performance. But sticking with the Steelers, they announced earlier today that when he's back healthy, Mason Rudolph is going to be the guy at the quarterback position. Would you guys rather have Rudolph or the guy that won it for them on Sunday, Del or, uh, Delvin Hodges? Yeah, I'm going with Rudolph on this one. I mean, his superficials definitely look about a lot better than Hodges. Devlin Hodges only played one game. Yeah, and we've, can't we've seen players play one game and then do nothing. Matt, Matt Flynn ring a bell? <laughs> he had one good game in Green Bay and has done nothing Yikes. since. Yeah, I mean, he has a 7-2 to <coughs> touchdown uh, inter interception ratio, does uh, Rudolph. And I think you got to give uh, Hodges more of a chance if you want to see him as the starter going forward. Yeah, do I think Devlin Hodges is, the, like, is a good Devin quarterback? Devlin Hodges, yes. at some point, will be a good quarterback. Yes, he, he needs to to find a team that's going to be willing to take him on. But really now, Mason Ruff's the guy. His lowest QBR quarterback passing rating was a, a, in, the, in the low 80s, high 80s, low 80s. Yeah. The other thing Because of the interception against San Hodges? Francisco. Without the interception against San Francisco, he's a, a quarterback that has the, the, the other thing I have wrong about Hodges against the Chargers, 20 passes, 36 runs. Like with Rudolph against Cincinnati, 28 and 25. I think Tomlin's more comfortable having Rudolph pass the ball than with Hodges. Sure, could that change? Again, coming out of the bye, maybe, if they did stick with Hodges. But I think with Rudolph, they're going to see that passing game evolve. That's why you wasted a three. Think, That's yeah, why you took against, a pick. You saw it against Baltimore. Mason Rudolph him. started to take control of the offense. It was his team. And he looked good, and then he, you know. Yeah, he looked, he looked really comfortable in that starter's role, which is something they need to um, was, capitalize yeah, with on the, for with the rest the of the season. With the Big Ben, they need to find that niche, find that starter just to get this team somewhat competitive in this AFC North. And they will be, I believe, with Mason Rudolph. All right, thank you guys. And to use some of John Hanna's hand motions here, uh, we're going to stick on the topic of quarterbacks. Who do you guys think is the best quarterback in the AFC North? It's Lamar Jackson. Yeah, no I'm going to go. No uh, question, it's Lamar Jackson. No, no, no. It's Baker Mayfield. It's, it's a not soft, Baker. It's, it's a not soft, Baker. All right, guys, I'm let me tell you long something right term. now. I'm thinking right long now, term. Jackson has been the standout so far. I mean, he's had the best stats, obviously, out of the AFC North. You know, 65% yeah. completion rating, 11 to 5 touchdowns, interceptions, a QBR of. 70.3, but I think Mayfield's letting his ego get the best of him this season. That's really There's, what's been his problem. I, I, the good news for, Mayf hey, good news for Mayfield I, is that his uh, agent got him those deals, or those listen, sponsorships before listen. he ended up 
being Listen, terrible this season. When, when Baker picks. Mayfield's on his game, this Cleveland Browns team is a sure contender. when he's when he's on his game. He hasn't been on his game this year. The two and, games I mean, they won, he threw for over 300 yards. Well, let's bring another guy into the fold, Andy Dalton. No, he's been, he's no, been pretty no, good. No, 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 I'm not no, saying he's the no, best one. Not no, at all. No, 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 I said no, 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 no. He, he doesn't get enough respect, but he's been one of the most mediocre quarterbacks his whole career. That's he's what I'm saying. Then why bring him up? We're yeah, talking about the best Because one. we're talking yeah, about the, the, the quarterbacks in the AFC North. We're talking about the best quarterbacks, not Andy Dalton. The only good thing Andy Dalton has done his is that overtime pass to Tyler Boyd. If we're talking about the worst quarterbacks, I'd run up Pax to Lynch. He's on the practice squad right now, the hey, Steelers. Hey, Trace McSorley is the third stringer on uh, That's really cool, but nobody really Baltimore. knows about him. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously Jackson has been the standout. We, we've gone over this, you know. Uh, Baker Mayfield. He has, he has no, the best stats. It's not Baker. I mean, it and when, May, Baker. when Mayfield's not throwing to the other team, he has been good. Baker. But, uh, yeah, Jackson's definitely been the best one so far. It's Baker. All right, well, thank for that being over, because I'm done hearing you guys talk football for now. We will revisit some of those topics later. However, we're going to swing over to the ice now, to the NHL, which season is fully underway now. Guys, who's been the most surprising team so far, and who's been the most disappointing? Well, my sleeper team, a team that gets no respect whatsoever from the league, and that's Carolina, one of the best teams in the league so far this year. I mean, it's, they're no. a they're, sleeper team. Sleeper. So Carolina sleeper, they made the yeah. finals. Yeah. I know. And I Carolina's not a sleeper. They were supposed no, they to be good. No, they don't get any respect from the league. Nobody talks about them. That's the thing, and that's why they're the sleeper. Dougie Hamilton, four goals, four assists. He's been the anchor of that offense so far this season, and you wouldn't expect a defenseman to do that. No. Carolina is a team you're going to look out for for the rest of the you, season. You I might call me biased, this. but I'm going Buffalo. No. Okay. No. Buffalo, their first John, and Buffalo's goal is an October no, Warrior. I'm going to say that sure, right they now. Won Let me the ask you this straight. question. For sure, last year they won the 10th straight. But those were all fluky wins, most of them overtime or shootouts. This year they have the stats, they have the core seat, they have the possession numbers the to back seat. up. Yes, oh, their yeah. first in power play, good. Uh, excuse me. Olofsson <laughs> is one of the most lethal players on the power play right now. First, first player in NHL history to have all seven goals come on the power play. His first seven of his career. First power play in the league at a 42.86. Sure, it might not last. All right, listen, listen, listen. It's the Dallas Stars. This no. team looked good in preseason. They didn't play well. They didn't play bad. This Right now, though, they are a bottom-dwelling team. They are 1-5-1, and one, a goal differential of minus 10. But they will turn it around. They're doing right, something interesting I have never seen. Well, here's what they're I'm building saying. from the. Exactly. Well, they're building of experience with Corey Perry, you know, Joe Pavelski. They're building yep. with experience, which is something we haven't seen before. So it'll be interesting to see if time will tell if this sort of thing turns out. Well, yeah, and I think the most disappointing team thus far has been my beloved New Jersey Devils. You're going with oh, your favorite team. I'm going with my Devils. favorite team. Devils I'm not are discounting terrible. that at all. You know, they had a great offseason preseason. All right. Gusev so before all Gallo opened his mouth and ruined my perfect assist from John Hanna, he was talking about the age and the experience of the Dallas Stars. Well, let's talk about the youth of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Guys, what are your thoughts on some of the young guys and their start to the season so far? Uh, well, you can't replace Malkin. That's no. uh, You've lost Malkin for a significant part of the year. Sure, we've seen guys step up like Sam Lafferty, who has uh, who had two goals last game, uh, already more goals than Jack Hughes. I feel... But, uh, I, wow, ooh, wow. That's, that might be fighting words on this well, desk. I well, I honestly it's true. think... Um, but you, you have to have guys step up in Geno's absence. You yeah, know, he's, you, you, you can't replicate that scoring no. with with one guy. You're going to get it from multiple guys, and I think that's what they're doing so far this season. That's been the best part about them. And they're staying put in the East, the Metropolitan Division. They're second right now, and that's exactly where you want them to be. I'm 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 waiting for the Penguins right now with all of the injuries that they have, all of the guys they have up that are young, inexperienced guys, be a playoff team. Right, they really haven't beat anybody that is going is going it's, to they, shock. They haven't the, beat anybody big, but I think they've still shown those steps. You know, with guys like Lafferty, you know, some questionable potentially free agent signings with your Brandon Tanevs, uh, former former guys who've sort of delved in the, delved in the minors like your uh, Joseph Blandisi's, your Teddy Bluchers. They've done de they've done serviceable in the absence of Malkin, but you need Malkin really to push this team over the edge. Yeah, I mean, you're replicating it with multiple guys, which is what they're ex they're going to have to do for until he's back. Because Malkin, you're not going to get that back from one player. As I said before, you're not going to get that back from maybe two players. you got to get it from multiple guys. Yeah, and I think, really, when Malkin comes back, this team is on a collision course for, I'd say, at least a deep playoff run. Yeah, yeah, if maybe it, a cup finals run. I think it's conference or bust for this team. It's always conference or bust if you're paid. Yeah, parents. they have the best player in the league right now. Yeah. Best player Sam in the league. Sam Lafferty. Yeah, of course. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's obviously Jack Johnson. Listen, we can go down that road a different time, <laughs> but right now, 
I think the Penguins, if they beat Colorado tonight, I feel like that would kind of solidify this team for me as a, as a quality team to watch. Yeah. All right, thank you guys. Now let's hop over from the ice to the diamond and let's talk about Bryce Harper, seeing the team that he played for last season in the Washington Nationals on their way to the World Series now and beyond that, as a Pirate fan, how does it feel to watch Garrett Cole just mow down everybody in his path so far this postseason? All right, well, while it is definitely disappointing to see your former team go to the World Series, um, I don't think he really cares too much. He's making $330 million. No, yeah. yeah, you can't do that. But, but, but he turned down a pretty substantial did, yes. offer from the Nats. In his defense, though, the Phillies did have quite a bit of injury this year. Their entire bullpen was on the DL, and that really affects them in the long run. Let me ask you this. What did he ask at his introductory press conference with the Phillies? We're trying to bring a championship back to D.C. Yeah. And guess what? They're bringing a championship back to D.C. Of course. And I love to see it because, like, you, I think everybody, like they lost when the Nationals lost Bryce Harper. Everybody people, wrote them off. People like, wrote this off. This was yeah, over. Yeah. Just don't even watch the games. Don't like follow the team. It's over. And all of a sudden, well, hey, wins and they had Anthony Bryce Rendon Harper. have exactly. an MVP caliber season, and that's the guy that stepped up the defense. He might walk in the offseason. But getting over to Garrett Cole, I mean, you can play the what if game all you want with Garrett Cole, but. I, I think it's it's in rooted Houston, in the Houston pitching coach. Of course, Brent Strom is yeah, a great Brent Strom pitching coach. Is, has helped Garrett Cole become that ace he, we well, now know. Well, he had glimpses of it in Pittsburgh, but really, the idea for Garrett Cole when he was in Pittsburgh, Ray, Sar Ray Sears' idea, not Ray Sarge, excuse me, almost said Ray Sarge. Ray Sears' idea was uh, to pitch the contact for Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole is a strikeout artist. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he is and not this guy has contact. He's still pumping 100 miles an hour in the seventh inning if you watched the game last night. Um, and he just didn't even have his best stuff last night, but still dominated the Yankees lineup. And, and it's the, definitely the players, disappointing the to see he got the, back. Uh, I mean, Jason Martin, Joe Musgrove, Michael Fel Feliz, and Kyle Moran. They're serviceable. Are they Garrett Cole? No. Excuse I think it's me, really gentlemen on the desk. Unfortunately, we are up against a break here. But ladies and gentlemen at home, don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. And when we come back to Sports Talk in the Berg, we're going to talk some Robert Morris football. We'll be right back. I was physically at school, but my mind wasn't at school. I had problems at home. That's when I met Narnice. She started helping me a little bit. Like, Nia, I don't know what you're doing, but your future is more important. She's my strength. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma. It changes your whole life. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. See on page four that the projections need to be flooded next Thursday. Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. What to expect when you're expecting? Like here? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to teamproof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the mom. You don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> home fire drills give your family a plan of action. In a home fire, you may have less than two minutes to get out. So when you drill, show everyone two ways out of the house, pick a safe meeting spot, and get there in under two minutes. Then practice home fire drills at least twice a year. You can even make them fun. So everyone knows the sound and exactly what to do when they hear a smoke alarm. Go to ready.gov slash fire drill and learn how to prepare your family for home fires. Welcome back to Sports Talk in the Berg. And let's take you back to 2011. I was in about sixth grade. Why are we going back there? because that is the last time that the Robert Morris football team beat the St. Francis Red Flash until this weekend. Guys, what are your thoughts on the significance of this vi victory, and can they continue this into conference play? Well, the, for the first one, it's huge. First win, obviously, since 2011. Yeah, first two over first any, sin, any C win since 2016. First road conference run since 2015. I think this gives the team the momentum into NEC play. Will they do, go far in NEC? I don't this think is, so. This is the last time. 2015 is the last time RMU started the conference season 1-0. That conference season ended kind of a disappointment. They finished 2-4. and four. 
but like right now, I feel like this is a great momentum boost for St. Francis, which is a top three offense in the NEC, a, a middle of the road defense, though, but a top three offense nonetheless. Yeah. But I really don't think that they can parlay this into any substantial success. I don't, oh, I don't, of course, they two, have there's some. There's really two beatable teams left in the NEC, and that being Wagner and LIU. Those are really the only two beatable teams for this. They obviously CCU is one of the be, CCSU is one of the best teams. CCSU in this. is my pick to win the NEC this year. By far, they are the best team. They've played some really good competition. They've hung with teams that they should not be with but they shouldn't they shouldn't hang with but yeah they have a really tough schedule going forward that's the, that's basically what we have to lay out right well, here they their tough, tough schedule is the entirety of the NEC yeah left. exactly yeah. And, and if they can play like they did in the last game who knows maybe they'll put up some good games but it's still a tough schedule I think they'll, I think they'll finish with three wins in the conference I think, yeah, three. I think they'll beat LIU and beat Wagner this week yeah those are the only two I can really see them going forth and beating but uh this is this is uh, Central Connecticut's world, and we're just living in yep, it for the NEC. Yeah, we're just waiting for that day to come where they go, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm going to be quick on this next one here, guys. Big debate as to who the quarterback of this football team should be. Should it be George Martin, or do you guys think it should be Caleb Lewis? Caleb Lewis. Caleb, Caleb. If, it, if it is George Martin, I'm done watching Army Bernard football. Clark, yeah. Bern if it's... George Martin, what's Bernard Clark doing? Caleb Lewis, he's guided them both to both their wins. Sure, he hasn't had the most... Sure, he hasn't had the most yards, but he but still guided he's not the them. Starter, he doesn't no. have the most yards. He's got the starter. He's, yeah, he's more good. of like a reliever he, he that has just the, gets wins for your team. So this man deserves three. a starting position, and I'm tired of people going, "Oh, George Martin's our guy," because he's not. It's Caleb Lewis. It's Caleb, Caleb Lewis, Lewis has proven that he can take this team to that next level. He obviously, he's gotten both their wins against St. Francis and VMI. George, yeah, Caleb Lewis is the starting quarterback for this team. He looks. Uh, when I, I watched Caleb Lewis against uh, Youngstown State, the young game where they were the the offense was pitiful, except for one really good play by Elijah Jackson. The offense really didn't do anything yeah. else in that game. No. But when Caleb Lewis came onto the field, even though they were down by at that point I believe it was twenty plus points, he drove the Clonos down the field. Sure, they lost. The, they turned over the ball, but he looked he like looked he professional. should. He, he looked like he, he looked belonged. like he should be there. Jo George Martin's looked lost a lot of the season, and that shows in his three picks. He's looked lost. Caleb Lewis belongs in that starter role for this team. Yeah, I mean, Caleb Lewis, it's, it's sort of just a name thing with uh, George Martin. That's he's got, he's got a little bit behind him on that, but Caleb Lewis is the starter for this team, and if he's not, uh, it's just ridiculous he's for this team at this football point. He's done watching football, too, if he's not? Yeah. There's a reason Caleb Lewis transferred to here from LSU. There's a reason why Caleb Lewis was able to stay on an LSU roster. That's, just, that, that's the plain, simple fact. He was a fifth-string guy in LSU, but he was able to stay on a yeah. roster of people who at LSU are definitely better than our quarterbacks. Yeah. LSU, one of the best football like football one of the factory. football, yeah, programs. football yeah. factories factory in America. Is the word. Yeah, All righty. Thank Caleb you, guys. Since Gallo, no you offered so much phenomenal insight on that last topic, let's switch it up and go to hockey, because I know you're a huge hockey fan, Gallo. The women's hockey team lost both games to number two-ranked Minnesota this past weekend. However... They were able to sneak in enough votes to get into the top 10 in the country's uh, rankings. Do you guys think that they are deserving of this top 10 ranking? And do you think they will be able to hang with number four Clarkson this weekend? I think so, honestly. And the yeah. way they played against Minnesota if was take, excellent. If, if we take Minnesota minus the third period of that second game, they were only outscored 6-4 to the number two team in the entire nation. Exactly. This, and this is a bit of a contrast from last year where they got absolutely dominated by Minnesota at Minnesota. 6-1. Yeah, they were able to play pretty well against this team, against number two. And I think they have a good chance to beat Clarkson. You know, Clarkson's yeah. number four. Clarkson's but, a good program. But to his question about should they be ranked, it's close. I mean, they're, they have nine points in 10th place. Harvard's only three points behind. So it's really a 10A, 10B, 10C Here, situation here's, between here's them and Here's why I Harvard believe they Boston. should be ranked is when coming into the week against Minnesota, they were receiving votes. They right? were receiving. So they were already in the conversation, and really... They, haven't, they didn't really do with, anything to quell that conversation. Exactly. They, you they okay, only you take away the, it. It's not even the last third period. You take the last 10 minutes of the game, of the second game against Minnesota, they... Take the game into overtime, right? Exactly. Yeah. They were, I mean, they were right there, and they don't only just belong there. They can make some noise going on the rest of the season. I believe. I think, they can, I think they can. I think they can. twice. This Clarkson game, they've lost their second leading scorer in Lauren Gable. She had 69 points last year. That's not something you can just replace overnight. They lost their starting goalie in a Kadesi Saab, 1.17 goals against average. That's not something you can replace with. 
I mean, sure, they might have brought in a good class, but you can't replace that overnight. That takes years of development and growth for a college program. All right, guys, let's stick with hockey at the Island Sports Center and go over to the men's locker room now. The men's hockey team dominated Bentley this past weekend. Do you guys think that Kapelmester is worthy and deserving of the starting job? And do you think that this team is top-heavy in terms of talent? Well, I think Kapelmester has Kappel, to be. Yeah, Kapelmester's proven that he's – there's a reason they brought him from Kapelmester. Well, hey, let, let's State. talk about this. That Michigan Tech game where they started Cooper and he got yanked in the first period after allowing that five was, goals. Was and then it was, was more of the same from Lubesmeyer when he came in. Kapelmaster only allowed two goals against this team, against a good Michigan Tech team. Yeah. I think he has to be the number one. Yeah, I, I, I would never disagree that Kapelmaster is the definite number one team. I think we, we talked about it on this show. Yeah, Kappel We Master, said Kapelmaster was the guy. He was named Goalie of the Week for the Atlantic Hockey the past week. Exactly. He's proven. He only has a, he's a 973 save percentage through three three games. He's proven that he is that starting goalie for this team. Yeah, I, and then like when we go to the top talk about like, you know, the talent of this team is, you know, looking back at it, they're really you say they're if they're they ask if they're top heavy. They don't re have a They top. don't have a top. No, but they've only had 12 players with points. Uh only two defensemen, so I think that are they top heavy no because they have this depth scoring through their lineup, but do they have guys who are more likely to score than others, like most teams? Yes. I just think they need to continue to spread out the scoring like they have been. I mean, they don't have a clear guy that's going to go out there and get you all the goals like, you know, Brady Ferguson. Yeah, they didn't have a Ferguson. Alexander. They don't have a Tonge. Yeah, exactly. They lost him, and they're going to need to replace him with multiple guys like we've said before, especially like we said about the Penguins. But, I mean, nowhere near the level of the Penguins, but this team needs to replace it with multiple players. Yeah, I, 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 and I, I think I this totally freshman agree. class of you know Santeri Hartikainen. Hartikainen is very Hartikainen impressive. Hartikainen, you brought in, you brought in guys like Brad or Brady Stono on the defense. I think these guys can contribute early. They contribute, just make this team hey, into this okay, Atlanta kind of contender. Don't think you guys are still there. Luke Lynch, Jamie Mancino, and Justin Dama, who are were all were you know, relatively good point getters last year. They should start scoring the puck. That's yeah. really where they're at. I, I'm impressed with Santari Hardikarnan. Um, I mean, he I've I saw a couple games and he went in there and was just out there laying checks and not showing up on the score sheet, but being a pretty off great player. The RMU volleyball team was able to defeat the only other undefeated team in conference in Long Island, and now they are on to a tough four-game road streak. Guys, do you think they can remain? undefeated in conference play. Well, I don't really see them losing at this point. I mean, Emma Granger is having a season two remembers at thus far, you know, getting another NEC player uh, of the see, week award. See, and my problem with this is there's still a ton of games left in this season. Oh, yeah. I, I just don't, sure, have they done well? Yes, very much, but I don't see them. There, I feel like there's gonna be one game where they let their guard down just a little, sure, they've only lost one set in NEC play this year, but there's gonna be one game where they let let their guard down, whether it be against a team, you know, like an 8 and 10 Sacred Heart or a 10 and 13 Bryant. No other team in this conference has a winning record so far, but I Bryant has a 5 and 2 NEC record. Yeah, I think the NEC records themselves are, are a good talking point about this, but I, I think, you know, when they have uh, Central Connecticut coming up, they're 3 and 2 in conference. But again, this is an RMU team that we saw play some really good teams on the road. Yes. And play well. Granted, they they're only win. yeah. Their only three losses have been on the road in that YSU tournament. Yes. But uh, they have four upcoming uh, uh, home games. Yeah. I, I away feel games. I, like after this stretch of four straight, I think they will go four straight wins through this whole upcoming road stretch. And yeah, I, they play, I wouldn't. They be, start it with Merrimack. Merrimack's a great booster. They'll, just be, to, they'll be Merrimack in straight sets. Mer Merrimack's a great team just to get that momentum started up against. Thank you guys. We're going to send it to a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we will have our final takes. Hey, Dad, I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior, will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If 
this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Hey Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to Sports Talk in the Berg, and let's just dive right into our final takes. Let's start off with John Hanna. Well, for my final take, we're going to be heading to Prudential Center, New beautiful New Jersey, to discuss the Devils and their head coach, John Hines. And Hines, he should most absolutely be fired. Despite being only six games into this year, the Devils so far are atrocious. And he wasn't much better last year, going 31, 41, and 10 for 72 points. Sure, he won the lottery where they drafted Jack Hughes. However, so far this year, they haven't... Despite the additions of the aforementioned Hughes, they traded for power play quarterback P.K. Subban and last year's leading KHL scorer Nikita Gusev, solid six winger and Wayne Simmons, the team has regressed. Uh, two overtime losses as their sole points on the year. Not only that, they've blown two leads of three goals or more, four goal lead to open the season against the Jets, and they just recently blew a three game lead to the uh, Florida Panthers losing that one to six to four. And it's not like we, this hasn't been happened before. The Flyers fired Pierre Laviolette after an 0-3-0 start in 2013. And the Blackhawks in 08 fired Denise Savard after a 1-2-1 start. So, Ray Shiro, do what you should do. Fire John Hines. Try to turn this season around for these diehard Devils fans. Well, my final take lies deep in the heart of Texas. That's right. I'm talking about the man we mentioned earlier, Garrett Cole, the bane of Pirates fans' existence currently. He heads into the offseason as the most sought-after starting pitcher. And he's certainly going to get a lot of offers. But I'm going to go a bit off the books here with my pick for where he's going to land. You can say the Yankees or the Astros again all you want. But I think Cole's going to be California 11 when he signs a six-year deal with the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Who wouldn't want to play with the best player in the MLB, Mike Trout? And with the news that Joe Madden just got signed to be their manager, I think there is more of a drive for players to play under one of the smartest MLB managers. And don't forget, he won the World Series in 2016 with the Chicago Cubs. I'm going to stick with the baseball ball trend like Gallo is. All of the Yankees fans right now that are currently upset about the Astros stealing signs need to calm down. You heard me. I told Yankees fans to calm down. Gallo's laughing right now because it's funny. Stealing signs are a part of the game. Personally, I can't tell you how many times when I was in a game that I, like, when I played a baseball game, I would steal signs from the team. And if anything, the Yankees need to have some, like, you need to recognize that the Astros are stealing their signs and change them. These are professional baseball clubs, and these players should be smart enough to have a second set of signs. They should have changed their signs. The Yankees should have. And kudos to the Astros for stealing signs. That's some great things, and I love it. And if these shenanigans continue, I think the Astros national matchup in the World Series would be amazing. However, the Nationals would win it in, obviously, four games. Oh, and next week, boys, guess what we're doing? I'm going to be Freddie Kitchens for Halloween. That'll be the next episode, two weeks, Halloween episode. I'm Freddie Kitchens. John Hanna, what are you? Uh, not sure yet. Uh, still have to go to side. Uh, probably just going to throw on a jersey. I mean, I'm not much of a Halloween person to begin with, but what about you, Tyler? That's really sad. Uh, honestly, I don't know. I'm probably going to wear a, uh, a hockey helmet and my devil's jersey and be a terrible hockey player, which, uh, I mean, I am in real life. So. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah. And, yeah. and like most of the devils. So yeah, exactly. Year, so, you know. fitting jersey. All right. Thanks. Thanks to Mike Shuley for filling in for Andrew Ostrowski, Tyler Gallo, John Hanna, myself, Luke Yost. We will see you in two weeks.